Well, thank you, Chris and Wayne and this fabulous crowd. It's an honor for me to be with you. And I got to say, in 20 years, maybe, um, almost, I've been in the Congress. Thank you for your support every time. I try to be worthy of the confidence you've given me. And um, you send good leaders to help us do the right thing, help us be aware of the challenges that we face. And uh, I just wanted to share that with you. I just saw my friend Mitch McConnell earlier. He was here to be with you, but things got behind. He had a uh, commitment he just had to make, and he wanted me to tell you again how much he appreciates you being here. And I've got to say, Mitch and the entire leadership, Republican leadership in the United States Senate, is rock solid on the right to keep and bear arms. They've been consistent on that. And I was particularly proud of Mitch. I almost called him, uh, but I, I didn't. But within an hour, he did what I wanted him to do immediately after the fabulous Justice Scalia died to say, we're not moving anybody to the United States Supreme Court. We're going to let the people decide in this election. And I'll mention in a minute just how important this Supreme Court matter is. Uh, great to see Rand Paul. He's a constitutional defender. You can be sure of that. Well, I'm particularly proud, since I was a fairly early and lonely endorser of Donald Trump, NRA has endorsed Donald Trump. Thank you. I got to tell you, there's a movement happening in this country. The American people are not happy. They should not be happy either. They're exactly correct. This government has been ignoring them, their legitimate request, the pleas that they've made to Washington year after year, and it's time to stand up and make something happen, don't you think? Yeah. The people are determined to take their country back. It's our country. That's who it is. And, and with regard to key issues, I got to tell you, we had a hearing yesterday on the enforcement of our immigration laws. This administration has just gone on strike. They're not enforcing any of our laws. And, and they're not defending us on trade. We've got a 5,000-page trade bill that creates an international commission that we get one vote and the Sultan of Brunei gets one vote, and they want to pass that. And that's not the kind of thing the American people want, and Washington needs to be hearing from us. Now, the people, so, you know, they say, well, you're a nativist, right? Uh, you're some sort of xenophobic. Uh, that uh, uh, you, you, you're not uh, sensitive to modern times and the great things that are happening throughout the world. But I got to tell you, I do believe that we have problems in the country. Our wages are down. People's working people's wages are down from year 2000 as much as three or four thousand uh, dollars each. The deficits are surging. Our debt is surging. And as the years go by, it's only going to get worse, according to every expert. The trade deals that have been cut are hammering the American working uh, people, uh, hammering American manufacturing where the best jobs are. And we need to do better with that. For 30 years, the American people have made a simple request to Washington, maybe more than 30 years end the lawlessness in immigration, create a system of immigration that serves our interests that we can be proud of, and our elected representatives have failed to do so. And we have sat by and allowed a president with a pen and bureaucrats and regulations and executive orders and policy guidance to run this country, things that could not pass Congress. Congress will not pass, but they're carrying it out in a way that's contrary to the constitutional order where you, through your elected representatives, set the policy and regulations of America. We need more American energy. 
produce jobs here, keep our wealth here, not sending it to Venezuela or Saudi Arabia or some other place. And we need, we got a health care system that's not working, that's hammering people with huge deductibles, higher and higher premiums. They're going up again this year to a degree we've never seen before. People can't afford this. You should be upset about it. Let me just say one thing about that. Um, last year, most of you may not know, the Congress voted to uh, eliminate Obamacare. Why did that not happen? The president vetoed it. But under the process we have now, we will pass that again next year. Hillary Clinton will veto it. Donald Trump will sign that bill, and Obamacare will be off the books if he's elected president. Well, I wanted to share with you briefly the, about the Heller case. This was five to four several years ago. And you, you remember it. It said that the right to keep and bear arms is a personal right. That means that the United States Constitution protects you personally and your right personally to keep and bear arms. But it was five to four. Justice Scalia was the fifth vote. Now that court is split four to four. The next justice on the Supreme Court will revisit, I have no doubt, the Heller case rather soon. If Hillary Clinton is there, you know what will happen. She has already said and said again recently, Heller was wrongly decided. If she appoints her justice to the Supreme Court, they will reverse Heller. It won't be a personal right. And what does that mean? It will be the greatest reduction in the free right of American citizens to carry guns since the founding of the republic. And this is why any city, any county, any state would be able to completely bar the right of its citizens to keep and bear arms within that jurisdiction. Can you imagine how long it would take San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, Philadelphia to completely uh, ban firearms within their jurisdiction? This would be a disastrous event. So I just wanted to say to you, uh, friends and neighbors, patriots, we have a, a lot at stake in this election. It may be one of the most important elections in our lifetime. And if we could have two or three or more justices appointed to the Supreme Court by the next president of the United States, we need to get this right. And I totally believe that you understand that, and we can work on it. So let me just conclude by saying we have got to win this election. We've got to stand up to this establishment, this bunch of globalists, politically correct, run everything from D.C. group that's had their way too long. And they sneer at the, our beliefs about the Constitution, the right to keep and bear arms, faith, freedom, traditional values in this country. It's time to send them packing. Let, let's take our country back. Let's give hardworking Americans a voice in, again in Washington. And let me say, let's elect Donald Trump as president. Let's make America great again. God bless you.